Hi, uh, Ginger. This is Matthew West. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Matthew? I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm so excited to hear from you. I'm about to see you September 15th. You're going to be here in Troy, Michigan. You're going to be there for the Veterans Benefit. So we'll see you in a, less than a month now. So we're excited. Yes. I, I'm looking forward to that as well. I think it is it uh, is it the 15th or the 22nd? Yeah, it's the 15th. 15th. You're right. Yep. Well, Very good. if it changes to the 22nd, I guess I'll see you then. But yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. I uh, I had the wrong concert in my in my schedule. So. I don't I don't know how you keep it straight most of the time. And <laughs> it's hard for me. I got three kids in college, and sometimes I don't even know what day uh, they're even here. Like. <laughs> I'm like, you were here when? Oh, okay. I get. I, I just have to. I have to just take it on faith and say, yeah, I was probably. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Well, we're so excited. We are um, actually opening up a new station in Windsor. It's our eighth station, and we have stations all along the coast of Michigan, and so we're really excited. Always have the best time interviewing you and. I just your songs are just such great storytelling songs. Um, I, I just I'm very appreciative of of your heart and and especially your songwriting. Uh, yeah, I think you are always meant to be a great storyteller. I'm I'm glad you can actually sing too. So then it makes it you know <laughs> it makes it even better. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate those kind words. That that really means really means a lot to me. And we have like always have so many people comment when when we have when we tell anybody we're interviewing you um i did have a, a friend of mine kevin say ask him if he's ever thought of naming one of his kids kanye and i'm like i don't think that's one of the good questions but okay or yeah, and you tell your friend that's that uh they need to be more original because i've heard that about a thousand times <laughs> uh yeah and like northwest southwest yeah i'm sure you've heard several versions of that <laughs> We did have a young girl um, named Bethany, though, that said that her dad passed away in May on his 50th birthday, and she said, she's addicted to an old song of yours, You Know Where to Find Me. She said she was really struggling, um, but he was the one that got her into church, sent her to church camp every summer, and like since he died, she's just felt very lost, and that's the first song she's been able to really attach herself to and she wants well, to know you will you be singing that song in your concert <laughs> well if she requested that night i will do my best to play that song that's a that's very sweet to hear that from her that's that's isn't it i it has to be amazing to hear what you do for people my son he's a he's 22 now and your song family tree has been life-changing for him because he struggled being abused for a very long time from his dad and he asked me when he was 10 he said am i going to be like that and i said you will if you choose and i said if you choose to follow god and his instructions no you won't and and that song i when i heard it i was like you've got to hear this the song with my matthew west i've never i one i had never connected with and it just it resonated so much with him just because you can be who you want who you choose to be in christ and you choose to follow him and do what he asked you to and no you don't have to be anything but what what how you choose to follow you know it's an incredible song i i think you're you're very in tune with god because he really lays some incredible lyrics on you um well, thank you. I appreciate that. We've had a lot of people ask kind of the same question, but one of your big fans, her name is Morgan, she wants to know why did you get started in music and why? I'm mean, like, when? Like, what time period and why? Well, uh, from a big part of my development took place in college. As a college student, I studied music, and uh, it was really there as a college student that I just found out that I really had a, a passion for songwriting and, and just sharing my music with the world. You know, I started booking my own concerts and printing my own posters and, you know, recording my own project in my dorm room. And, you know, I've always had a very, like, just, I don't know, a little a little entrepreneur always, always on the go and making things happen like that. And, uh, you know, once a fire got lit, it was just there was no slowing down for me. There was no turning back. So um, 
that's that's been my that's been my path ever since college well it's it's amazing to hear how different people have different stories i bet your particular story makes you really appreciate your management and your booking agency right (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's great to have a team to help me for sure so you have um some new music out and um especially your your newest song has been just uh yeah, I'm so, so glad. Like I was watching your countdown, you know, for mended. I kept seeing like your little countdown to to that. Um, I know the question a lot of people want to know is like, what what is that inspiration? If they haven't read that for themselves, like, what is the inspiration for that song? For the song mended? Yeah. Well, um, it's actually interesting that you mentioned um, earlier the word abuse um, and. Uh, the the woman whose story inspired that song is a woman who um was also a victim um she uh she spent her whole life um being wounded by different people in her life that that should be the ones protecting you you know your mom and your dad are supposed to to be the at least the one place in life where you can go and know that they're they're going to protect you and not harm you and um unfortunately this woman kathy she uh, she had been abused uh, severely as a as a child, and at the age of thirteen, she ran away from home. Wow! She ran in, she ran into the arms of a of a man who promised to once again protect her. Yeah. Um, and instead, um, instead she wound up being uh, subjected to a life of uh, of of trafficking and just experiencing oh just gosh. horrible darkness in her life. Um, and the story just, uh, it's one of those stories that just when you think it, it couldn't be worse, it gets worse. And just when you think she couldn't be more wounded, she was more wounded. And yet, you know, I, I tell the story and I sing this song in the hopes that people are reminded that, you know, we have a God who's in the business of stepping into the darkest, most desolate places and reaching out to the most wounded of us. And saying, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. And he reaches in and he miraculously pulls a wounded life close to him and reminds us that that his arms are the only arms that will never uh, leave us, never forsake us, and never harm us. You know, Um, his plans are not to harm us, but uh, plans for a hope and a future. And, uh, And that's what's happened in Kathy's life. It's been a process. But she was rescued from that situation, and and now she's uh, she's still figuring it out. But she's asked, you know, she's asked God into her life, and was baptized at a church. And um, you know, those years of abuse have definitely taken their toll. Um, but I wrote that song just because uh, I wanted you know, really more than anyone. I wanted her to know that that she might look in the mirror and see wounded, but but God sees her in a much, much different way. He sees her as, as, as a, something beautiful in the making, as someone who can be mended. And, uh, and so while it's a song specifically for that person, I believe that's a song for, for somebody who is coming to the concert in Troy or listening to the radio, someone who's struggling with an area of their life that has left them wounded, and they're desperate to believe that that they don't have to stay wounded. Yeah, you know, that song, when I heard it, it reminded me of when I was back in the 80s listening to Christian music. And there was uh, the song, you know, when God may see a shepherd, when people may see a shepherd boy, God may see a king, you know. And yeah. I love that song because at the time, I was, my dad wasn't really in my life. And, you know, I saw myself so differently and. I don't didn't know till I became a parent how much that influence really matters, you know, and and it does. Yeah. It it, sh- it rewires your brain, and and you have to have God override that. <laughs> and you That's know right. those scars are all. I mean, they're always there, but you can use them as a badge of honor and courage. And that I went through that and I made it. You know, I, God brought yeah. me through that. You can use that scar to help someone else. You know, and that song is so great. I'm so thankful that you wrote that. Um, I think it, you're, it applies to so many different situations. But 
I actually talked to you a couple of years ago in an interview and told you if you ever hear another story about abuse, like I had been, both me and my kids had been through it, and I re- I was really thankful to hear you made you made this song. It it was it was like so warm to my heart the minute I I read it, and just oh, watching the you. lyrics. Uh, I appreciate you just because you're you know you are an artist, you're a lyricist, you're a song teller, you're you you're almost like a pastor when you talk, like. I mean, I mean that in the best way, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, like you, you not preachy, just like you, like, I feel like I've been to church. Like, I feel like I just got all these Bible lessons, you know, like while I was enjoying your concert, I'm very appreciative of, of you as a person. You're always so gracious for, you know, people that talk to you about your music and everything. And you're just really, really appreciated. Um, well, thank you for those kind words. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's got to be about more than music for me, and you know, I don't. I think that's what. If all we do is come to Michigan and entertain people with songs, then you know that'll be nice. But I think that you know, I've seen you know God's power show up at, at concerts and um, and people's lives changed, not because of the songs, but because of His presence. And so, you know, I, I once you get a taste for that, you know. You get a taste for God's goodness. You get a taste for God's presence. You get a taste for His grace, His redemption, His His work in people's lives. You want to see more of that, and uh, and and thankfully we get, we get a chance to to see more of that every day if, if we'll just pay attention. So, I I think that's kind of you know like you can entertain somebody for a night, but if you can transform someone's life through ministering God's words to their heart and you transform their life for good that's a whole other thing you know and i think when you hear people tell you that like that should encourage you to keep doing concerts please uh because you as as long as you're doing that you're not just you know the entertainment wears off after a couple days but the the words that come out of those songs they they resonate and they do they whether they're already a believer and it was something small they're going through to something really really hard and heavy it doesn't matter you know um changing someone's life in any way is a huge thing and you're doing it and I'm i'm so thankful for you thank you so much matthew and i will be seeing you will actually be seeing you in person on september 15th and We'll come say hi to you, and uh, I'm bringing my Canadian representative. I'm I'm a I'm a USA person, but I work with the Canada Station, and because we're all along Michigan, I'm in Detroit, and so she'll be coming from Canada. So I'm bringing some Canadian love with us. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see you then. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Have a blessed day. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.